Hi, Bob. Today we talk about priority rules as part of the Vizin Basics series. I will try to keep it to uh, the basics, not go too much into the detail, but try to show you some basic settings you can follow. So, assuming that um, this is the minor movement, this is the main movement, when you place a priority rule, you hold control down and you click right and hold it, and then you can move it. And you need to place a stop line where vehicles will basically stop to give way. So let me place it there. And then once you place it, it automatically brings up the this green one. This green one is the conflict marker. Um, we are going to check against gaps. So we place it to the on to the same distance from the conflict point. And we set it up by to a default value of 2.6 or 2.7. We take out the minimum clearance. And maximum speed is the speed um, vehicles from this one at the stop line. We consider um, vehicles on the, on the main link. So if someone comes with 170, it will be considered. If someone drives 190, that it won't be considered. It is by default 180 because usually we don't really model higher speeds in a model. But you need to, if you can, um, if you have such a model, you can increase it, of course. Uh, for to one stop line, you can have multiple conflict markers, and you can set it to the all link or to a given lane, as you can see here the setting. And you can set vehicle classes, you can specify these two certain vehicle classes. So this way, people will give um, way. Let me just delete these in the template. So if I run it, you will see that vehicles will give way to the um, traffic on this lane, but only in this lane. They will not consider anyone in that lane and we want them to consider. So what you do is you select it, you click on it, then you can add more conflict markers with the uh, control right button. Here, I do the same settings as to this one, just the gap will be a lower one, maybe 1.8 is fine, like this. Now they will consider others as well. Let me slow it down. You see, they consider them but not, they are not going to give, uh, maintain such a big gap, just making sure that you know, if they are like changing lane, then there will be no funny situation occurring. Yeah. You can always increase or decrease that settings um, to represent your local conditions. But assuming that we have a, a congestion, let me just create some congestion here. Okay. you will see that they will drive into each other because once these guys slow down on the major movement the gap will be um, the gap the gap time we check whether the 2.7 second or something that um, that is um, a very short distance if they drive very low speed. So basically just drive onto each other. Let me just uh, show what happens. Yeah, it doesn't make sense this way. <laughs> so let's select it and place one. Sorry, priority rule. And place one on this lane just upstream of that merging point there. Let's put a gap time zero because we check for clearance. The clearance let's be 10 meters for now. I will show you why. And the maximum speed is around 14 km per hour. You can do like 20 or 10, depending on the queuing uh, situation. If the queue is like a rolling queue where we could slowly drive, then you need to put maybe more than 14. If we call like it's more like a stopping queue, like a car park, then you probably want to go a bit lower. Because what happens is, you see that it creates 
Um, and you can click out. So if you are in this setting and you created one, it automatically brings up uh, the new one. You just basically click out with the left button of the link and then it goes out. Okay, so now we have one. This shows the end of the uh, clearance check. We want to increase it a bit. We want to cover for uh, we want to cover this whole area basically here. So we don't want any vehicle to come in until this area from between that that is cleared out, and there is no one moving there uh, less than 40 km per hour. If they are moving faster, that's fine. I don't care about them because if they move fast, then um, once I am here, they will be already gone. Yeah. So this is something to consider. If you want to create like a yellow box where no one stops, you just basically place another stop line here. Again, just um, behind that. Zero, put, I don't know, let's put 10, 40. Let's increase it a little bit. Um, so let's move it a little bit like this. So they will consider... Um, let me just put a bit shorter. Like that. I wanted this marker to be downstream of that connector point. So if someone already started to drive onto the connector emerging, these guys will give way. Uh, to them. However, as you can see, you might want to increase the distance here to like uh, 14 ish. So it goes behind that. Which means they are not going to um, they are not going to drive in if someone is already there like that. Yeah. So this is the way you do it. And this works in this way. Um, so we discussed the the. The, um, so as you can see, conflict is, so priority rules are useful to create like gaps and check for clearances and also to create yellow boxes and you can use them in intersections like this. Again, you can just place a, a conflict, uh, sorry, a priority rule here to create like a, a gap. There is one more thing to consider here. So you can have trucks, and if you have trucks, what you want to do is you want to duplicate it to make sure that it's exactly in the same situation, sorry, in the same location. And let's just check. I did not duplicate. Duplicate. Okay, now we have it. I remove all the conflict markers. Ah, of course it removed it. Let me just do it again. Duplicate, I remove two. So now we can move this and we want to create truck. It's only for heavies. So what we do is all vehicle types, we can put it to HGVs and buses. And the gap time for heavy vehicles needs to be greater. So at least like a 3.6, 3.7 second gap. And cities gap, we place it here. So this way, if a heavy vehicle is stopping here, it will wait at least 3.6, 3.7 seconds uh, gap, because for them it takes longer to come in. And also, just another one, this is like a pro tip. So for the new, for the first conflict area for cars, we can place a conflict marker here. 
for all vehicle classes. However, for the conflict marker, this one, will only be for buses and trucks. So if a bus or truck comes on this lane, what we do is basically we have zero gap, but we have a clearance of maybe eight meters and the full speed. So what this does, if someone is coming here and there is a truck, I, stored, I said before that you don't really need to check for gaps from here because once the vehicle drives, once it passes the gap marker, the time it takes for this to come in, that normal car will be gone. But if you are talking about a bus or a truck that's longer, that takes up like this much space, the trailer or the end of that vehicle will, will be still in this area, so it will just crash into it. So that's why you need to have, for all the vehicle types, a conflict marker for buses and HGVs, so like all oh, for long, long vehicles here, where there is no gap. There is some clearance to check for that space, and the speed is, is for all vehicles. So it's not for queuing. Basically, it is for queuing as well, but for everything. Yeah. So like this is the way it works. I hope this makes sense. Uh, let me know if it doesn't, and or if you have any comment or questions, just please leave them in the comment section below. And please like and subscribe if you like what you see. That would help the channel to grow. Thanks a lot for watching.